Chan. Its name alone is enough to inspire us with its sea air and its red carpets where directors such as Quentin Tarantino, Jane Campion, Ken Loach, Gus Van Zandt, Steven Soderbergh, Roland Joffé, Emir Kusturica, David Lynch, Costa Gavras and many others have triumphed with majesty. In this episode, we will discover the old town of Cannes, the Socket District, the origin of its film festival, and we will end our day with a nice fireworks display. We start our visit of the cinema city by discovering the painted walls of the city on a random walk. We can see these monumental walks painted on the walls of Cannes in different streets and avenues. We discover at the corner of a street a fresco of Starsky and Hutch, Ghostbusters, and of James Bond with Sean Connery. We continue our work to discover the immense portrait of Marilyn Monroe. We then discover the Church of Notre Dame de Bon Voyage, which is a historic building that was the first star of the Emperor Napoleon and his return from Elba on 1st March 1815. The small chapel and fisherman's shelter of Notre Dame des Sables, built in the 15th century, became Notre Dame du Bord de Mer and then Bon Port, and finally the Church of Notre Dame de Bon Voyage at the end of the 19th century. And inevitably, being in Cannes, we learned from posters in the church about the Ecumenical Prize, which is an independent film award created by Christian filmmakers to reveal the mysterious depths of human beings. Leaving the church, we take the direction of Suket and cross on our way colored buildings, a bandstand inaugurated in 1880. And the town hall of Cannes, which is located in a very beautiful building built in 1876 in an eclectic style with classical tendency out of limestone and cut stone. On its square, we discover a monument to the dead, made of bronze, and on which stands a group of four soldiers, an airman, two infantrymen, and a sailor, brandishing triumphantly on a shield an allegorical figure of the victory. We continue our way and pass in front of the Fragonard perfumery, whose factory we visited in our episode on grass, for those who are interested. We now arrive in the old town and the famous Sakat district. In the middle of these medieval streets, there are many restaurants, some of which have hosted stars on the big screen, like Leonardo DiCaprio. Here we see again some frescoes on the famous painted walls before arriving at the heights of the Sakat near the place of the castle. Perched at the top of the medieval streets of the old town of Cannes, it hosts the Notre Dame d'Espérance Church and the Castro Museum, installed in the old medieval castle. The watchtower and the astral chapel together with the church are classified as historical monuments since 28 July 1937. Beyond the visit of the museum and the church, the square is in itself a tourist destination offering a panoramic view of the city and the hinterland of the Bay of Cannes and of the Esteran Massif. 
The musical night of the Sacred Festival takes place every year in the second half of July at the square in front of the Notre Dame d'Espérance Church. The construction of the church, which began in 1521 with the money of the people of Cannes, was spread out over a hundred years before being completed in 1627. The church is in Gothic style. Its porch is in Renaissance style. It's surmounted by a square Romanesque bell tower. The great Italian organ from Pavia dates from 1857. We now leave the church to walk on the square and admire the view on Cannes, its ports and of course its festival palace. From the historical hill of the circuit, name of Cannes is displayed in giant illuminated letters. A little reference to Hollywood style for the upcoming festivities to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Cannes Film Festival. The Castle de la Castre is built at the top of the second hill which dominates the city and the Bay of Cannes. It's beginning to the 11th century when it was built for the monks of Lérence which were installed mainly in the abbey on the island of Saint Honora since the 5th century. It's a main monastery built on a quadrangular plan like that of a castle with a dungeon. In the middle of the central courtyard stands the square watch tower from the 11th century with a height of 21 meters composed of 109 steps and offering an extraordinary panorama of the city and the Bay of Cannes. In 1919, the city of Cannes bought the castle to install its museum. We now go down towards the promenade of Cannes. We cross again a fresco of the famous painted walls. Direction the Croisette and the Festival Palace. We pass by the Path of the Stars, where stars, just like the Walk of Fame, have marked the ground with their handprints. We find among others Ben Kingsley, Ben Gibson, George Lautner, Meg Ryan, Cameron Diaz, Sylvester Stallone. Arrived in front of the Festival Palace, we discover the famous red steps where tourists have fun to take pictures. The story of the Cannes Festival begins when the jury of the Venice Film Festival in 1938, under pressure from Hitler and Mussolini, changed the award winners a few hours before announcing the official results in favor of Nazi propaganda documentary. 
Shocked by the events, the French diplomat and historian Philippe Hermanger thought of organizing a free independent festival without pressure or constraint of any kind. The opening of the International Film Festival took place in Cannes on September 1st, 1939, at the same time at the Venice Festival. After this visit, and before the fireworks in the evening, we spent a little time at La Croix des Gardes, on the heat of Cannes, a classified natural space from where we see the Venetian Palace. We then go back down to town to have a drink in a very nice bar with a nice view of the sea. It's now time to go to the Croisette, to attend the fireworks and to find a place. The city is crowded tonight and the spectators are already starting to settle along the promenade. 